Imagine if there is no rain, no water, what will happen for us? What will happen in our life? If there is no water, no rain, what we will do? In Africa, in one country, there was no rain and they could not cultivate anything. And people were hungry and even the food was running off. So they began to go and flock to other country. And it was real. I think it, it is in this country of Zambia, I think. But people were really going away because there was no rain and nothing was coming up. And in the first reading, it says, the rain and snow came down from heaven and it has an effect on this earth. And that is why it did, the rain didn't go empty. It has fruit. That is why there is bread to eat for the people. Without rain, for us, it will be very difficult to survive. Without water, there is no food. When there is no food, imagine for us to live. And that is the physical world speaking to us that without rain, we cannot do anything. And water is the source of human being. Water is the source of life. Without water, there is no life. That is why when there is no rain, we, the farmers, get trouble. Even all of us get trouble. Because even we are living in the city, but we are always relying on food. If there is no rain, there is no food then we will be in crisis. We will die. So, God is saying that rain has an effect. If the rain has an effect, and there is always fruit, if I hit someone, there is always effect. If someone says that there is no effect of your beating, then let him come and get one beating. So, always there is effect. So Jesus is, God is saying, rain has an effect and it always bears fruit. It gives life. And the second reading is emphasizing that there is a glory awaiting for us. There is glory awaiting for us. Like the seed, to get fruit, it will get trouble. It will go through many hardships, but at the end, the seed will reach the destination. It will bear fruit. So, always, there is a glory. So, suffering at this present time are not worth comparing the glory that is revealed to us or awaiting for us. The glory is awaiting for us. And it also says that the woman who is pregnant and she is in pain when she is pregnant and when she delivers the, by seeing the kid, the child, the pain she forgets. The pain she forgets because that is the joy of every woman or man. So, always life has a struggle, but never give up because always life will bear fruit. Life has to bear fruit. That is why God sent us in this world to bear fruit. And if we are not bearing fruit, then it is our mistake. It is not God's mistake. God sent rain so that it will water the ground. So does the rain does the same thing. So when we are thirsty, the earth as when earth is thirsty, 
really earth is seeking for water. So the same, same thing, our heart is also thirsty for God. If our th heart is thirsty, then we receive Jesus, then we are quenched. Our thirst is quenched. Then we will bear fruit. Always we can bear fruit. I remember when I was in Mexico, I had an accident because I was playing football and I was kicking bicycle kick and I broke my uh, two spines. And I was in the bed for three months. And in these three months, since the doctors were giving a strong medicines, I had an effect on my stomach. And my stomach began to ache. And I began to vomit all the time. And one day my superior took me to hospital and I was very thirsty whole day. And my superior was giving only one spoon of water, always. After 10 minutes, he will bring one spoon. When I say, I'm thirsty, and he will bring one spoon. So whole day, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, one spoon. And I was thinking that time that the pain in my body is not so terrible than my thirst for water. Just I was thinking that God quench my thirst so that I will be thankful to you. I will be thankful to you. So I know, I experience that how much it drives us crazy when we are thirsty when we don't get water. Imagine if we are not getting water at all for one week, then our life will be chaos. For cooking, we need water. For bathing, we need water. For our needs, we need water. For drinking, we need water. For everything, we are using water. So that is our physical need. And the gospel is saying very clearly that those who are prepared, they only can bear fruit. We also can see that God is, Jesus is the seed, or in other way, Jesus is a water. The seed also can grow and also for the seed needs water to grow. So we can say that we are seed and Jesus is water. Without water, we cannot grow. I am not saying in a physical sense that we have to grow. For this Jesus to receive, we need first acceptance and the second we need love and third is we need to live so we we accept Jesus in our heart and we love it then we live it with him so then we always bear fruit if we are not accepting just living our life then we are like in in the path of rocky ground. We rejoice a bit, then we fade away. Because the ground is not solid, our heart is not solid, so Christ cannot penetrate or possess us. And it is very important, without Christ, we cannot live. We cannot live. That is why we have a problem in life. We cannot love each other. We cannot forgive each other. We, can, we are not generous. We are not merciful. We are not kind. We are not growing in this aspect because we are not with Christ. We are not receiving Him. So how is our heart? Is our heart really 
nice ground for Christ to come and dwell and bear fruit or just we have closed ourselves from Christ or 50-50 Christ is 50 and my worldly life is 50 50-50 or 80-20 so Christ is 20% in my life and 80% I am alone with the world I can do whatever I want my dear brothers and sisters I am saying without Christ we will not grow nothing will grow in us sometimes we, we, we may say why my father and mother is not kind enough or loving enough Okay, your father and mother is not kind or loving enough. But what about ourselves? Are we loving and kind enough? Without receiving Jesus, we cannot become kind and loving and merciful. So, in order to grow in these aspects, we need Christ. Like rain, the grain needs water, so do we need Christ to grow? Without Christ, nothing will grow in our life. And we all have potency to become holy. We all have potency to become good. That's why I say we see mirror. Everyone sees mirror. Because they know they, they are good. They want to be more good. But the fact we see mirror is shows that we are good and we want to see ourselves good. But without Christ, we cannot become good. So it's very important to have Christ in our life. Without Christ, it's very difficult to live. Mother Teresa used to say, how can you live a life even a minute without Christ, without Jesus. As the air you breathe, so you need Christ like the air. So if we are taking air all the time, oxygen all the time, so we need the same thing of Christ. Sometimes we may occupied with many things. Sometimes we are giving priority for many things. Sometimes people are giving priority in mobile. Sometimes people are priority giving to their friends or sometimes we are giving priority to food. I need to cook so I don't go for mass. As it is that food, will, food is everything, food will give life. Only one hour for Christ we cannot give. We have all excuse in order to receive Christ or in order to accept Christ, but to have for other things we have no excuse. So is our heart prepared to receive Christ? Is our heart longing for Him? Is our heart thirsting for him? Can we say that, oh, this Sunday I have, because of sickness I could not go. And do we cry really for not receiving Christ? When the rain doesn't come for one year, we will cry. We will lament. We will pray. But when Christ we are not receiving how much we are crying for it. Are we really crying for it? Or just it is a formality that I need to go for mass and that's it. The effect effectiveness is very important. Like rain comes and changes the, the, the earthly life. It gives life. So Christ, when Christ comes to us, we will be not the same. If we receive, really, then our heart has to change. 
If we are not changing, then it is our mistake of receiving. We are not receiving with faith. If we receive with faith, then surely we have to change. There is no matter, we cannot say that, oh, I am same 20 years ago, still I am same. No, our attitude has to change. Our mentality has to change. Our approach has to change. Because Christ will come and he will change our heart automatically. So that is why, no matter what, whether we are at this present rocky path or good soil or with thorny path, no matter what, but God's word always has an effect. And the word of God is Jesus, the fullness of grace. So if Jesus comes in our life, there is always effectiveness. So in this Mass we ask to really believe in Jesus and prepare our heart very nicely so that we may be able to accept Jesus in our heart and live with Him, love Him and live with Him. First accept, love and live. So we need to accept with our whole heart, soul, mind and strength and live with all heart, mind, and soul in strength so that we may be able to live with Him and He will change and He will make us wonderful and everyone has the potency to become saint so we, we can become saint, we can become good. That is why it's very important that the fact we are not receiving Christ, that is why we have problems. So, if we receive Christ always, then we will not have problem because Christ will teach us how to accept, understand and forgive. So, Christ will teach us how to live in unity and harmony. Sometimes we try to live in unity in a family, but we cannot because we are not receiving Christ. So, in this Mass we ask for this grace to really acknowledge Christ how much we are in need of Christ, how much we are longing for Christ, how much we are thirsting for Christ, and only Christ can quench our thirst. No human being or nothing in this world can quench our thirst. So our heart is really thirsting for Christ. Like the earth always thirsts for water, so does our soul, our heart. So in this Mass we ask, for this acknowledgement so that we may always yearn and long for Christ and if we are not coming for Mass or praying to Christ, we always need to pray, come for Mass so that that shows us our longingness, our thirsting so that God may come in our heart and we may bear fruit. Even if some are hundredfold, or 60 fall or 30 fall, no matter what, but we will bear fruit. So that is what God does. Whatever God does has a fruit. So we ask and call Christ to come in our heart so that we may be able to bear fruit in our life.